Hello YouTube, we are back for another installment in relation to Jeremy's Detective Comics number 33. Before we begin, I want to thank all of you for stopping by, and I want to thank all of you who voted for my channel for the 2024 Comic Book Community Awards Best Cleaning, Pressing, and Restoration Content. For those who have not voted for me, please do so. I will leave a link in the description and it's there. And plus, there's also links for Amazon if there is other items that you would like to purchase, such as my bone or mini spatula that I use or blue LED light. They're all there if you're going to buy it. Help me out and buy it through my Amazon link. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And let's bring home the win for the 2024 Comic Book Community Awards. So what are we doing? Last upload, we had an aqueous cleaning, which it is still soaking. It's on the side because I'm really working on this book. I'm hot and heavy coming back from Disney and I wanna get this done. But what we wanna do is we want to do our calcium carbonite mixture so we can deacidify. We are going to deacidify each page. What is that? That's like a kilo, a kilo of carbon of calcium carbonite. And the reason why we're using calcium carbonite and we're not using calcium hydroxide is we want to do it where it's less aggressive. Calcium carbonite is less aggressive and that is why I want to use it on this book and another reason why is we just want to clean the pages I'm not looking to make this where it's a restored book where things are bright white no we want the patina to exist because it's a conservation project so what are we going to do? What we're going to do is this is hot water from my tap. It's one gallon of hot water. I am going to take two tablespoons, and I'm not wearing a mask, guys, of calcium carbonate, two healthy tablespoons, and we're gonna put it into the water, okay? Into the hot water. And what we want this to do is we want it to dissolve as best as possible. Now, my research, and again, I'm not a scientist or mad scientist or whatever you want to call it. I'm just a guy who works on comic books. So what we're going to do is I am going to try to understand this, which I do understand it. We want this to break down into the water so i'm going to mix it up i'm going to mix it up as nicely as i can just with a spoon like that oh my god we just had a breach of paper towels because i want to i want to be neat i like to be neat when i work and right here i have a dowel or a skewer not a dowel and we're going to use this as a mixer and i'm going to mix it up as best as I can. We're really gonna stir up this calcium carbonate, which is less aggressive, less risk of making color loss or fading colors on the graphics. We do not want to do that. But what we want to do is we wanna try to neutralize some of the acidity in the paper pulp. That is the goal, trying to make it more neutral, trying to eliminate some of the acidity that ends up destroying the document over time. So this is the main goal of doing this and keeping or putting an alkaline buffer in the paper in the cellulose, in the fibers of the paper, 
and this is the deacidification process. Now in the past, I actually, and let's see if I have it on, um, I have it on in my side drawer here. These are pH strips, okay? Right here, universal indicator paper and they're from pH one to 14. You wanna be right in the middle. So I, in the past, used to test the paper to show and to illustrate how acidic something is, okay? And it turns all these different colors depending on, on how acidic and how basic it is. So you can get these. In fact, I get these from Amazon as well. I'll leave the link and check out my past uploads on how I used to use these. And I would just wet one of these strips and I would place it on the wet page and it gives you a good indication how acidic the actual page is. So by adding the calcium carbonate, and in fact, let, let's do a little test now. Carbonate, I mean. Let's, let's see what this comes up as by putting it in the solution. So I'll put it in and let's see if we get a reading with the calcium carbonate. So right here, it is turning green instantly, right? So that green is about an eight or a nine, if that's coming up, which is pretty good. You want like a seven, that's my understanding, a seven, eight. So yeah, look, it's right there. It neutralizes, it's nice and face right in the middle. So that's pretty good right there. So let's do another stir. And then we're gonna let the actual powder sink to the bottom. And we're gonna use the gallon with the calcium carbonate dissolved in the water and all of the excess that sinks to the bottom, we do not have to use because that powder, powdery substance really causes havoc to the page itself and it sticks to it, it sticks to the Holitex and you don't want that. And I'm perplexed a lot of times in doing the deacidification, I'll tell you why because when you deacidify a document, you're really supposed to leave the document alone after you deacidify. You're not supposed to do things that will pull out the calcium carbonate that you're putting in. So you, you don't wanna rinse it, you don't wanna draw out the goodness that you're putting in to prevent the deacidification from occurring. But it's a catch-22 because also what I'm doing is I am leaf casting. So when I leaf cast, everyone knows water is put in and you're sucking out the water and the paper pulp will connect and fuse to the existing paper. And by doing that, you are drawing out some of the goodness that you put into the paper. But there's nothing that you can do about that, right? You can't deacidify and not leaf cast. You have to deacidify first, then leaf cast. You can't do it the reverse. So we're going to put this to the side right now, and we're going to let this settle. Now what I'm gonna do is I have my paper on the floor in my grate soaking just like this. And it's been soaking for about a half an hour. Let me fix the camera. There we go. So it's been soaking for about a half an hour. 
So what I want to do is I want to lift it up and let's draw it out of the vessel of the container. Okay. And then I'm going to put it to the side, just like this. So let's take a look. Now, if I flip it like this, I don't know if the camera is picking it up, but there is a lot of darkness. There's a lot of darkness, a lot of impurities that came out of the page just by adding the water. And that's a good thing, okay? This is what we're trying to do to keep this book alive for future generations. So what I wanna do now is I wanna dump this. Let me get rid of this water and I'll be right back and I'm gonna let the calcium carbonate sit a little bit longer and settle. And then we're gonna do the deacidification. So stay tuned. Okay guys, we're back. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna deacidify the page, the centerfold of the Detective Comics number 33. So here we go, we have our clean page that we soaked just in pure water. Now what I wanna do is I wanna get the calcium carbonate solution into the tub. So we're gonna pour it in slowly and it is a little cloudy but we let the calcium carbonate mixture settle to the bottom. And this is the solution that you want. You want it to look like a light milky color so it can absorb into the cellulose, into the paper, and hopefully suspend the the, acid, or the acidification or the acid that is in the actual fibers. We can make it more supple and we can make it a better book for future generations. Now, this is what you want to try to keep in the bottom. I don't want that to go into my bath. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna slowly lower the page with the grate into the solution. And I wanna slowly push out the air just like that. So it's resting in it. And then we'll slowly push it down like this and let the milk of calcium carbonate penetrate the fibers of the centerfold of this marvelous book and we're just going to let this sit in here for a good half an hour that is the time frame and we're only going to do one soaking i'm not going to do it any longer Okay, one hour is enough for our purposes just to let it get nice and flushed with the solution. And one hour is all we need. And then we're going to come back and I'll show you what we're going to do because then we're going to press this in the book binding press, Big Bertha. And we want to make it nice and flat and we want it to dry so we can do our leaf casting in the future. So that's it. I'm going to shut the camera off and I'll see you in about a half an hour. Okay, guys, we're back. This has been soaking in the calcium carbonate solution for a half an hour. That's all we're gonna do. So I'm gonna show you how to take it out because you wanna, you wanna try to take out the page without 
pulling it on the surface. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So right here, I just put a piece of holly text on top. And I want to lift up the grate on the bottom and I want to lift up the bucket just like this. You see that? So we're not pulling the page through the solution. And it is a little darker, okay? So I'm happy with the results, meaning that the solution is darker. So it did absorb into the paper, hopefully for that half an hour. And hopefully we're achieving our goals of deacidifying the wrap. And we're gonna do this for every wrap. It's gonna be a slow process, but I wanna do it for the centerfold first. We always work on the centerfold first. And the reason why we wanna work on the centerfold first is because we start from the inner pages going all the way to the first wrap. And we know that this is going to be a job where we are going to leaf cast it. So another important thing that's gonna happen is that we're gonna work on the paper pulp. Cause I wanna try to match the paper pulp as I do with all of my leaf casting. I, I always try to do my best to match the leaf casting pulp to the interior of the pages as best as possible. So right there, we just took some of the liquid out. And what I wanna do is I wanna get this ready for pressing. So I'm gonna take this and we're gonna put it to the side for now. And then let me get rid of the tub. And let's see if you the camera is picking it up. I hopefully it is. It darkened it substantially. Okay. It darkened the water. So it did clean up the centerfold. And I think we achieved our goal. So what are we gonna do now, Jerry? What we're gonna do is I'm going over to the side and I'm grabbing two shelving units, okay? So I hope you can hear me, but I think you can because it's a small room. And I have here a shelving unit, just like that. We're gonna put it on the workbench. Next, what we want to do is I wanna put some paper towels down because we're gonna press the page nice and flat in the book binding press, Big Bertha copy press. From this point forward, I like book binding press. And that's what I like to say. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna take the wrap and I am going to rest it on the paper towels. So let's do that. Let's put it on the paper towels and I want to readjust my top piece of holly text. I don't like the way it's resting and the way I do it and everyone has seen me do this in the past. If you watch my channel, I roll it up like a cigar or like other things in the past that I used to roll when I was younger that is so popular in today's day and age, and that's marijuana. That's all you smell in New York. You go to Manhattan, you drive on the parkway, you smell pot. And do I like it? Listen, no, because I sort of liked it when it was more not as common, not as prevalent openly in society. If you, if you want to do and smoke pot, 
I have no problem with you doing that. In fact, in New York, it's legal. But it's just the overexposure of smelling it, driving, walking in the city. Wherever you go, it seems like that's all you... You, ha you have to be involved in smelling it. And, and here's another issue. Another issue not with the marijuana. The other issue is... I cut this piece of Holitex too small. It was my mistake when I did it. And you can see because I cut it too small, I'm having a problem with me covering the whole page. And it happens. There you go. Okay, so that's one sheet laid out. Now I want to adjust the bottom sheet I want to make sure that it is covering and it is covering nicely okay so what we want to do I see some people use squeegees and other devices to flatten it out which I just want to be careful when you use squeegees because if you use squeegees or other flat devices to smooth out the paper or the page, you can run risk of damaging it. And if it's not flat, the page, between the two pieces of the Holly Texa Rame, you're not gonna be able to squeegee it flat. So what I like to do is I like to lift it just like this, and I like to see if it's flat, and if it's not flat, like this with the spine, I will do some maneuvering where I will gently lift the page and then I'll pull it like this. And that's how you can achieve making it flat. But you have to be very careful doing it this way because it is wet paper and wet paper is delicate paper. So I'll smooth it out with my hand like this. And just making sure everything is nice and flat underneath the holly text because we're gonna put this in the press now. And we wanna make sure everything is nice and flat before we put it in the press, just like this. And again, silly me for making the holly text too small, but we're okay. These will go into the trash soon enough because it's taking too much time the way I'm doing it. And guys, this is an insight of working on books. It's not a one, two, three process. One, two, three, you're done. No, it a, takes a lot of time to do it right. And even if you take a lot of time, doesn't mean it's gonna be 100% right. Okay, so right there, I have two sheets. I'm gonna try to absorb some more moisture. And then I'll take these, we'll use them again. I'll hang them on one of my pipes for my oil burner. And that's always something that we can use again. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put another piece of paper towel, just like this, okay? Then we're gonna take my second shelving unit and I'm gonna sandwich it in. And then this is going to go in the book binding press or the copy press and we're gonna wrench down on it and keep it in overnight. And then after that, when it's dry, we'll reassess it. We'll see if it cleaned up. We'll see if we can get rid of some of the bad paper. And then we're gonna work on making the paper pulp because we're gonna leaf cast the centerfold. And we're gonna go through each page at a time, centerfold to the first wrap and then the cover. So thank you for stopping by. I appreciate your support as always. Subscribe if you're not and go vote, as I said in the beginning, for Jerry the Jitterbug. We'll really 
put a smile on my face if you care about that sort of thing. So stay tuned.